Hi. Now what I have here is a typical velocity time graph. And what we need to be able to do is interpret what it means. Basically, it's about the motion of a particle P about a fixed point O. I'll show you how P would move according to this graph. It would start to speed up and then go at a constant speed and slow down. It reverses direction, speeds up, now goes at a constant speed. When it reaches O, it starts to slow down, eventually coming to rest. And that's given then by each of these sections throughout the graph. Now what I want to do in this video is show you what we mean by gradient, how we interpret it, it gives us acceleration, and also how we interpret the area from the graph to the horizontal t-axis, that it represents displacement. Then we'll come back to this graph and we'll do a few calculations and we'll run the video through again of the motion of P. Now first of all what I want to do though is introduce you to some notation that we use for constant acceleration. It's often called the Suvat equations. We've got S is displacement, U is initial velocity, V final velocity, A is acceleration and T is time. Now if I had a velocity time graph, velocity measured in meters per second and time in seconds. Suppose I had a particle moving at 4 meters per second. Then its initial velocity is 4 meters per second, that's u, and it carries on like this, okay, for 5 seconds. So how far will it have traveled? What would its displacement s have been? Well, if it's traveling at 4 meters every second, then after 5 seconds I would have expected it to travel 20 meters. That is the result of doing the initial velocity, u, times the time, t. So in other words, then we have 4 times 5, which is 20, 20 meters. Well, no surprises there, fairly straightforward. But what happens though if we had a velocity time graph where the motion of our particle was such that it changed its velocity at a constant rate. As you can see here, you've got u, the initial velocity is 0, the final velocity is 8, and the time is still 5. How far did it go? Well, to answer questions like this, what we do is we take the mean velocity. And when you're working out mean velocity, what you do is you take your initial velocity u, you add it to your final velocity v, and divide by 2. So that would be your mean velocity. So in a case like this one, what we have got is that u is 0, plus the 8, divide by 2, so we can think of this particle as moving with a velocity of 4 meters per second for 5 seconds. Ah, it's something like this then. So if we were just to multiply this then by the 5, we've got the displacement. Comes out to be 4 times 5, 20 meters again. So to get displacement, what we do is we take the mean velocity and times it by the time. And that actually works still over here, because if you were to do the initial, 4, plus the final, 4, that's giving you 8, divide by 2, you're back to 4 again, 4 times 5. So this formula seems to work. Now something that's very interesting is that when we were doing this example here, thinking of it as moving at 4 meters per second, let's just draw a line there, we get this particular shape here, the rectangle. And do you notice that when we do 4 times 5, that's the area of this rectangle. And when we come over to here, if we were to look at the area of this triangle, 
it's the same as the area of the rectangle. This little section in here is the same as this one. And the formula for the area of a triangle anyway is base times height divided by 2. 5 times 8 divided by 2. Well, that's essentially what we did here. So it seems as if the area under the graph gives us displacement. But not all graphs are going to look like this or this. Here's another one. Here we have got the initial velocity being 2, final velocity being 6, time again is 5. So let's just see what the displacement would be if we use the formula here. By working out the mean velocity, what we've got is that s equals the mean velocity, so that's going to be the initial, 2 plus the final, which is 6. Divide that by 2, so we've got the mean velocity, and times that by the time, 5. What do we get? Well, 2 and 6 is 8, 8 divided by 2 is 4, so we've got a mean velocity of 4, 4 times 5, back to 20 again. Now, I said earlier that this was the area under these two graphs. Now, if I was working out the area under this graph, this would be a trapezium. And hopefully you know the area of a trapezium. All you do is you do the sum of the parallel sides, times the distance apart, and divide by 2. Well, when I analyse this equation, isn't that what I've just done? Sum of the parallel sides, 2 plus 6, times it by the distance apart, 5, and divide your answer by 2. So this is effectively the area of a trapezium, still the area under the graph. So this is looking pretty impressive. What happens if we have a graph going downwards? Well, let's just try it. OK, the displacement S is going to be equal to U, which will be 6, plus the final velocity V, which is 2. Divide by 2, and you've got your mean velocity, and times that by the time T, which is 5. 6 and 2 is 8, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 4 fives, 20, 20 metres again. We're still doing the air of a trapezium, sum of the parallel sides, 6 plus 2, times the distance apart, 5, divide by 2, air of a trapezium formula. So what we've got here then is that displacement is given by the area under the graph. So I'll just leave that as area. Now there's another interesting thing that we can detect from these graphs. And that is acceleration. Acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity. In other words, v minus u gives us the change in velocity. And if we divide this by the time taken, we get the rate of change of velocity, the acceleration. So if we look at this graph here, what's the acceleration? How quickly have we changed our velocity? Well, basically, we haven't. There is no acceleration. But look, if we use the formula, we've got the final velocity, which is 4. The initial one was 4. And if we divide that by the time taken 5, we've got 0 divided by 5, which is 0. No acceleration. And by the way, the units of acceleration are meters per second for the velocity. And you're dividing that by time. So you're changing at 0 meters per second every second. But we tend to blend these two together and write that as meters per second to the power minus 2. It's pronounced meters per second per second or meters per second squared. Now, what about a graph like this? What's the acceleration going to be? Well, change in velocity divided by time. V minus U, so it'd be 8 minus 0 divided by the time, 5. And what have we got? 8 divided by 5 comes out to be 1.6. 1.6 meters per second per second. Now, what I want to draw your attention to, though, is that what we're doing when we do 8 take away 0 is this distance. 
and we're dividing it by the time taken this distance. And when you do this divided by this for any graph, what you're getting is the gradient. So it looks like the gradient gives acceleration. And when we come over to here, let's work out what the acceleration would be here. A would be the final velocity, 6, minus the initial, 2, divided by the time taken, 5. 6 minus 2, 4, 4 divided by 5 gives us 0 0.8, 0 0.8 meters per second per second. Less of an acceleration than this one. Notice how the steepness of the graph is less than what you had over here. It still is the gradient because when it comes to this triangle you're looking at this distance divided by this distance to give gradient. 6 minus 2 all over 5. Now with this graph, well, something special happens. If we were to work out the acceleration A, it would be final velocity, which is going to be 2, minus the initial 6, all divided by the time taken, 5. 2 minus 6 is minus 4, divided by 5 gives us minus 0.8 minus 0.8 meters per second per second. So how do we interpret this? Well this is the gradient, the gradient is decreasing. But in questions like this quite often you're asked to say what the deceleration is. Now if they ask you what the deceleration is then we take just the magnitude of the acceleration which would be the 0.8. 0.8 meters per second per second. So watch out for that when you've got the gradient decreasing. So in summary what we have here is that the gradient of our lines give us the acceleration. And what you need to do is use these facts when you are looking at velocity time graphs. Now what I'd like to do is just return you back to the graph that we had earlier and we'll just have a look at one or two features in that graph and see how they relate to what we've been discussing here. So here's the graph again. Now initially when t equals naught the particle is at rest. And what I'm going to do is take to the right as positive. So on the first stage of motion you can see that it is accelerating, getting faster and faster. And how far does it cover? Well, it's given by the air of the triangle, which is going to be the base, 2, times the height, 3, divide that by 2, and you end up with 3. So I've done the working here, actually, and you can see that the distance is given by the air of the triangle, which is 3 meters, and the displacement given by this formula is going to come out exactly the same value. That's because we're moving in the positive sense. You'll see what happens when we get down to here between distance and displacement. Acceleration is the gradient, 3 divided by 2, coming out at 1.5 meters per second per second. So, where is the particle then after two seconds? Well, it's going to be to the right by three meters and it's going to move there. Call it A. Now over this next section you can see the gradient is zero so therefore it's going to move at the same velocity of three meters per second to the right. And the distance covered will be given by that area. Well again I've done the calculations for this and you can see the distance is 6 meters. Same as the displacement. So let's plot where it's going to be now at this new point B. Now on this next section here you can see that the gradient is now decreasing. It's negative so the acceleration is going to be negative. And if we do those calculations, you'll find that the area is one and a half meters. Displacement still comes out at one and a half meters, but the acceleration is minus three meters per second per second. Note that the deceleration would be 
3 meters per second per second. So where is it going to be? Well, it's going to be one and a half meters further on to the right. So that's going to be at this new position. So what happens now? Well, it comes to rest here at C, and we've got this section here. How far it will go would be given by this area here. Well, let's just work out what that comes to. Well, it's again one and a half meters. The distance will be the other triangle. But notice if we use the displacement formula, you get minus 1.5 meters. So that means it's going to now move back to the left in the negative sense. And that actually brings us back to B again. The acceleration is negative 3. So let's just plot where it moves to. It goes from C back to B again. As it passes through B, it's going at minus 3 meters per second. That's its velocity. So it's directed to the left. Notice how I've got the acceleration. You can either draw it as an arrow to the right, so it's minus 3 meters per second per second, or you could reverse the arrow and say that it's accelerating to the left at 3 meters per second per second. So it speeds up here from C to B. Now what happens on this section here? Well, we can see that it's horizontal here, so it's going to keep going at the same speed. There's no acceleration, and the distance covered is given by that area. And if we do those calculations, it comes out at 9 meters. And again, notice how the displacement turns out to be minus 9. So it moves to the left again, 9 units. And 9 meters is going to take you all the way to O. So let's just plot that position in. So it's now at O. And where does it go from here? Well, on this section, you can see that the distance, if you work that out, let's just work that out, turns out to be 6 meters. Displacement is minus 6, so it's still going to move to the left. And we can see that it must be slowing down because the final velocity is 0. And the acceleration here is a positive gradient. The acceleration is 0.75. So again, there's two ways of looking at this. Because it's positive, it's acting in the positive sense. So if I just plot that on, you'll see that I've put the 0.75 acting against the motion. So it's actually going to slow it down, de-accelerate it. I can turn the arrow around, and I've got negative 0.75 meters per second per second as the acceleration. They're both equivalent to one another. Either way, the particle will slow down. Now before we wind up, let's just run the motion of P through in real time. OK, well you can see it's speeding up and now moving at a constant speed, slowing down, reversing direction, gaining speed, and now moving at a constant speed to O. And on the final stretch, just slowing down. OK, well, that brings us to the end of this tutorial. And as usual, I hope you found this useful.